Right now, the deaths of two young brothers, Benson Jiru and Emmanuel Mutura, following their night arrest in Kianjakoma town in Embu shocked the nation. A police report of the incident suggested the two men jumped out of a moving police vehicle without the officers in the same vehicle who were guarding them not seeing. The Independent Policing Oversight Authority, IPOA, has been investigating circumstances leading into the deaths of these two at the hands of police officers. The police maintain they have absolutely no knowledge of how the brothers died. Even as Speaker Justin Moturi added a fresh twist, claiming police allowed the vehicle used in the arrest to be torched by an angry crowd, ostensibly to disappear forensic investigation and evidence. Now, the brazen murder brings to sharp focus the question of police successes across the country and over time. With all due respect tonight, we host IPO Commissioner Dr. Walter Ogoni, who's with us. We also have uh, National Police Commissioner Sarah Duncan, who's with us in the studio as well, and from African Censored, investigative journalist John Alan Namu. Let's start where we should. It is a mother's cry that tells all too clearly the pain of losing her two sons, a wound made worse by a lack of answers. It is reported that on Sunday night, 22-year-old Benson Jiru and 19-year-old Emmanuel Mutura were arrested and taken to Manyata Police Station in Embu over curfew violations. But the next day, the boys were unreachable. Nilipigua simu na baba yao. Akaniambia angetaka ni mpereke asubuhi kwa tutavuta watoto wake na wararangi nje. When they got to the police station, however, the mystery only deepened. When the parents came to Manyata Police Station to ask, they were told nothing. Eh? When they went to Ronyenges, it is DCI Ronyenges who assisted them. He told them two bodies were collected. They can go and check uh, at Embu Mochari. We went there and through we found the bodies there. Only now for Manyata police to tell us that they collected them. Yet we have been coming here and we have been denying they know nothing about it. The family is seeking answers, but police insist that they are looking into the matter. Kamani how witness Mabusu abaye to me record statement is our zote na in file file inafunguliwa. Ikifunguliwa, inaperekwa bere, ionekane kama kulikuwa na either negligence ya mtu. The family suspects foul play, since the two bodies were dumped 30 kilometers from the young men's home. They were doing small business, and on the particular day, they were actually selling uh, pig meat eh, at home. And they, they earned money with themselves, over 10,000, the earning of the day. And even by the time they were, uh, we saw them in the mortuary, they earned nothing in the pocket. Cases of police brutality and use of excessive force in enforcing COVID-19 containment protocols have been on the rise, but the Independent Policing Oversight Authority says it is looking into each case. Gena Kirari, NTV. You know, this is such a tough and heavy topic, and tonight um, would like some honesty, and I'm glad I have a representative from the National Police Service. Let's start with you, Madam Sarah Duncan. Uh, We've up to date to, to where we are right now. What is the update on this question and this issue from the police themselves? Thank you, Smart. Uh, when the news, let me first of all start by saying one life lost is far too many. And we cannot simply hold such a situation. Uh, it's not normal. When, this, when the news of uh, the death of the two boys came to us, uh, it, it, was, it wasn't amusing at all. Every one of us wanted to know what has happened, what is the truth of this matter. And I am so happy that uh, uh, my superiors had to dispatch the uh, officers from IPOA and internal uh, police unit to investigate the matter. The matter pleasantly is other investigations. It is my hope and the hope of many police officers today in the National Police Service that the officers so doing the job will dig lock bottom and unearth every truth about it. I am a mother. It's no fun losing my child. I too would, would want to know what could have happened to the two boys? Here's the thing, we, we've, we've recorded, I mean, and, and Namu, you know, supporting me if I'm wrong, we've, we've had this before, 
Mm. We, we've had the question of police saying we will investigate, we will get to the bottom of this, and really nothing comes out of this. Mm. Does this feel the same? Does this feel familiar? Uh, unfortunately, James, it's all too familiar. You know, when, when uh, the young men, Emmanuel and Benson, passed away last week, it, it got me reflecting about just how long it's been since I started covering cases of extrajudicial executions, police brutality and forced disappearances. It was literally one of my first assignments back in 2005. And every year since, there have been, I've, I've covered multiple cases of the same. And, you know, in as much as there are good officers here, and I'd like to believe that Sarah Duncan, you're one of them, you know, there, there's a serious, serious systemic problem with policing in this country. A serious problem that I'm not talking about as a fact, as a matter of conjecture. These are things that we've reported consistently, year and year on year on year, and we can name names. So this, this, you know, this whole story about investigating, getting to the bottom of it, I, I, I'm really not holding my breath. And 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 it's sad for me to say something like that as a person who's observing and hoping that justice outs. But based on the things that we've seen as recently as last year. I'm not holding my breath on this, James. And, and this is why we have, you know, IPOA, you know, because the whole reason of, you know, this new constitution um, and, and the existence of your commission was that we would have an independent body outside the police which will help the public when all these issues of police excesses come about to investigate. On this particular case, please update us. How far and where are you in the investigation of this matter? Thank you, James, and uh, my fellow participants. Um, the case in Embu, first of all, um, as you said, IPOA was uh, created to look into such things, and the history of the creation of IPOA was actually to oversight the police and to make them accountable and receive complaints that arise from action. Now, the IPOA, the first thing we asked ourselves, do we have mandate to investigate this case? And the answer was yes, because the first thing is that the boys, the Ndwiga brothers, I will call them, were already in police custody. It does not matter how long they were, but they were under arrest for violating uh, curfew uh, restrictions. So that's where we start. And then from there, of course, we have got our investigators, we have got uh, the professionals investigating this case and we are we are moving on with it we have of course done some parts of it like you know the postmortems have been done that is uh, was the first thing now from there that evidence has to move on to follow the track of uh, the incident it's quite uh, have something to do but i think we will be able to manage to investigate this case I must ask, the, the first action from the police was to transfer senior police officers from this uh, location somewhere else, ostensibly as a punishment, uh, and that is what it looked like. And again, it's another what you've seen, when something bad happens and there is public uproar or that sort of thing, the police service just moves the, the police, you know, the top cop or whoever it is, and that story, it's again part of the investigations, Madam Sarah Duncan. Well... It is important. When, when complaints come in a police station touching on one or, one or two officers or on, or on officers manning a station, it is always prudent to think and think wisely because uh, such officers accused of doing this and doing that uh, are definitely doing the public a disservice. And if investigations have to be carried out, uh, comprehensively, such officers, in my view, ought not to be working in the same police station where investigations are going on. It is only them? prudent, maybe yeah. it's only prudent, to have them transferred to a police to another police station as the investigations continue. The fact that a police officer is transferred from one police station to another, even from a police station where investigations are being carried out doesn't exempt him or doesn't you know like uh, qualify him 
to be not part and parcel of investigations. Police officers have been called from, from whichever corner of this nation to come and record statements, to come and you know, uh, give evidence before court. And, and, and in my view, for they are not, you know, to, to be able to de-exerted uh, complaints that could be emanating from actions and activities uh, carried out by such officers, it is prudent to have the officers serve in another place. But that is not a reason, that, is, that, that doesn't mean that office, the officers, you know, it, 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 that doesn't mean a closure to the investigation of the matter. Allow me to push you <coughs> back on, on, on this question of moving the officers, because we don't have the blue code, right? The, the investigations are done <coughs> by, you know, fellow police officers and that sort of thing. In this particular incident, you know, these men arrested, this young boy is arrested, put in a vehicle, a moving vehicle, five police officers, their statement is they have no idea what happened. These boys just, you know, jumped from a moving vehicle and they don't know anything. And that's their statement tonight. Does that make sense? Is that even a reason to, enough to, to me make it sense? Does, uh, to me, it doesn't make sense at all. I, I try to add up one or two things there, and it's like I'm still left wanting to hear more. Uh, I'm still left wanting to have a few things clarified. But I'm happy that the matter, at the moment, is in the hands of uh, the independent uh, policing authority, which is IPOA. Uh, if it was being, if the matter was being investigated by uh, one of our own, I would probably say uh, uh, we need to dig, we need, we need, we need a bit of enforcement to be able to, on, to be able to work out on the matter and to bring out information that could be reasonable and understandable. But we have a lot of faith too, as police officers in Ipoa. And together, together with the, the internal uh, police unit, we believe and we are praying that their in investigations will lead us into understanding what exactly happened in this. Do we have a time frame for this? We don't. Do we have a what? A time frame. <coughs> well, if it is an inquiry, an inquiry in a, an, an inquiry carried out uh, in, a, in any police station ought not to take more than thirty days. Uh, I believe at the end of the 30 days, uh, I, both IPOA and uh, internal police unit will be able, will have put, you know, bits and pieces together. And they will, cost, they will put them before us to also understand. It's not a simple matter to me and also to the National Police Service. National Police Service has good uh, men and women, very loyal, willing to, willing to work to serve this nation and to protect the face. Of the of national police service right. when we hear any such thing that is being connected any such allegation that is being connected to any one of us we want to know we want to know and even where where we are right now we want to know the truth about that now does that give you uh, comfort and confidence as i go to the break for fast break of what you've had so far <laughs> no it doesn't and in as much as investigations are going on and i would you know i'd like for there to be a positive outcome the facts and the trends and history does not give does not bear the police out in this respect that the blue code will actually be you know undone and justice will be done in most instances where the police have actually been tried and gone to trial and been convicted it has happened through the actions of other people who've been gathering evidence to try and support the case and 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 through public pressure Right, so it, it's really incumbent on the public, actually, more, more even than the police, to keep the pressure up and speak, keep speaking about extrajudicial executions, about this case in particular, and about the systemic issues that we face in order for there to be some sort of movement. I'd say the same of IPOA, right? Because IPOA has oversight, mm -hmm. but, you know, and, and I, might be, I might be being a, b a bit unfair to, to IPOA here, but, even the statements from the ground, when the, the, the police officer who was addressing the family uh, on the ground you know, spoke, they said that they sent IPOA to the ground to investigate. IPOA is an independent organization, right? It yeah. should move on its own, of its, you know, yes, it, it should, volition, it's uh, a, of yeah. its own volition. Yeah. It should not be caused to move by the same body that, is that it is supposed to be investigating. Those things for me are problematic. And that's why, I, in as much as I'd like to believe that, uh, that Ms. Duncan here 
is, is actually being you know, honest and forthright about what it is that they want. The, the history does not speak well of the police's record in, in being able to investigate and, and, and actually prosecute its own officers. All right, I'm going to take a short break. You're watching with all due respect. When I come back, I want to talk about expand this because it's not just this particular case. It's many cases. And... Enjoy the best family entertainment on Star Times Classic or Smart Bouquet. Yes. Subscribe to Classic Bouquet for only 899 for 30 days or Smart Bouquet for only 999 for 30 days. Come on eBay. Ni Star Times. Wonderful, your baby's quite active. After I discovered Morphix, I rediscovered my baby. She's jumping and running around. Well, we call that the Morphix Comfort. Thanks to its elastic sidebands, Morphix provides freedom of movement for your baby. All babies deserve a high-quality diaper. You should also try Morphix. We smoothly transitioned to virtual learning, which effectively accommodated digital tutoring, even held our 29th graduation online, and having the next one in November 2021. Register now for the ongoing September Intake, St. Paul's University, your university of choice. Did you know at Riru Mabati Factory, we offer free delivery within the same day? Did you know at Riru Mabati Factory, you can open an account and leap a pole pole at your convenience? Did you know at Riru Mabati Factory, you can get customized sizes according to your roof plan to avoid wastage? Call us now on 0111-050-700. Riru Mabati Factory. Malisafi kwa beipoa. The ability to interact with others in a courteous, approachable, and professional manner will enable you work well with fellow students and with future colleagues. Our graduates and our future leaders make some of the most sought-after professionals in their respective industries. We admit both self- and government-sponsored students for our master's, degree, diploma, and certificate programs that are accredited by the Commission for University Education. The moment you have been waiting for is here. ZTEC University. Invent your future. Nestle Nankid 4 helps build a strong foundation for your growing child. Nestle Nankid 4, our best for you. Just one capful of Dettol is enough to disinfect surfaces and protect your family and your home. Dettol, tested effective against COVID-19.
You're still husband and wife. And that means you still have a right to all of his assets, Catherine. So what look are you going for? The look that says, I'm back with a bag. What I want is to be dropped dead gorgeous before I see my ex-husband. I want to look different. I want to look exciting. I want him to drool over me when he sees me again. A place. Narisha na Optiven at the Garden of Joy by Optiven. Deposit 995,000 Kenya shillings and get a free washing machine for your home. Call us today. Question marks that have been there, that have been put, raised. For instance, the fact that the vehicle which was used to transport the two a late uh, a young man is the same one the police brought to the scene to be to be touched by the public while well, the police kept uh, they, they just stood by there doing nothing this is a vehicle which was uh, which had a lot of evidence but the police never fired a shot when it was being set on fire so they brought it actually it, i mean the, the implication and suggestion seems to be they brought it there to be to destroy evidence. Welcome back. You're watching with all due respect. How do we answer for that? But I'm sorry. This is, we've never seen this before. If you look at it, um, this is a public property. We know police with public property. Nothing happened. A vehicle was there, it was overturned. The public had all the time to do whatever they wanted to do with it. What was that? Well, if probably we look at the sentiments being aired by the Muheshimiwa, that a police deliberately drove the vehicle to the scene with a view to destroy evidence, uh, I find it a bit on. I, 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 I find it a bit unactionable. It's not actionable. If you followed that story, clearly smart. You, I'm, I'm, I believe you must have seen police officers trying to reverse the vehicle very fast because they were being pelted with stones. And they tried to escape because, and, and members of public were coming from all sides. It wasn't possible for them to reverse. They had to arrive from the vehicle to their safety. And uh, so that part, that part of delivering the vehicle to the scene with a view to have it destroyed and have all uh, uh, evidence or any possible evidence in the vehicle destroyed. I, I, I may not buy that at the moment. I, I need to be educated further huh, to be able to buy that thought. But, but this However, is part, it's part of the blue code, to, in, in all honesty, because with all due respect, Panamsa, we've seen instances away from this where a, a gun you know, from the scene is disappeared, we cannot find it, you know, a different code from the gun is, you know, and all these things happen and essentially just because it's the police who do the final investigations at the tail end of the day, right? Yes. So the evidence really is the preserve of the police. This is part of the problem. Smart, I must say this. We have been confronted with similar situations in the past and we have a lot of gains. We have a lot of gains. Will you remember the, the, there was a case that came up around uh, Gedurai where a police officer o, 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 o was alleged to have been assaulting and uh, taking part in extrajudicial killings and many allegations came up. You remember how we launched investigations in that matter and the officer the present is before court. I'm not proud of it but I'm proud of the officers who carried out those investigations. And I'm proud that, at the moment, we have a matter that is before court, a competent court of jurisdiction, and I'm sure that after that matter is, is concluded, this, we all Kenyans will be satisfied that justice is done. Before maybe I, I, I exit, I would want to refer to you about the incident that took place in Murorongo, where an officer or a number of officers were said to have participated in a, in a, you know, you know. This is the Willie Kimani case. Yes. The officer, 
that matter was investigated by police officers too in corroboration with officers, officers from DCI, officers from uh, general duties. Everyone was willing to give evidence as to what they knew, what they had seen. The, the officers are now before court. To me, it's like, hurrah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, uh. So, so much as such things are happening, and much as we could even probably be investigating or we could even lose a case in court, the investigation itself, yielding ourselves to the process, in itself is a gain. We are not happy as Kenyans. Remember smart, we are family people. I agree, I agree. And we I'm, hate to... We, I, we, and yes. it, it, like me, when I go to, to my house after work, and after there are those incidences taking place, I have no peace in my family. I answer questions from A to Z. Mom, what's happening? We hear you people have... You people, my own mother will tell me, uh, uh, we, we've heard that you people are killing people. You, we heard that you people are doing this. We, we people. But it's the truth. But you see, and this is why I'm telling you, we don't enjoy, we don't enjoy such incidences. Given a chance to participate in the in investigations where such allegations are made, and police officers have been identified to have done this and to have done the other, we will always, we will always endeavor to do our best. I, 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 I'll defer to Atronam because you're more competent in this, yeah. in this matter. And she's bringing it up the Willy Kimani case, I want you to, to, to bring it back. But yeah. the remembrance that this, there was disappearance for almost three, four days, mm -hmm. and it was the public pressure. Exactly. Right? It was if, public pressure that, that led to the finding of, of uh, the, the, the bodies, bodies. Of, of Willy Kimani um, and, and, and the two Josephs, right? That, that's, that's one instance. And for, for the case that's happening from um, Lolongo as well as the one in, uh, in, uh, in Mwiki, I'll give you the case of Stephanie Mora, right? 2017, this young girl, she's seven years old, she was playing on her balcony, right? Shot by a police officer. Uh, the case goes to court. It takes us all the way until 2021. In the ruling of the court, in the judge's ruling, he says that this girl was killed by a police officer who the other who other police officers willfully refused to identify right let's let's go back to 2014 if you remember um in in uh, one of the one of the counties of the coast there was um i forget her name unfortunately but she was 14 years old eight police officers stormed into her house and um, and shot her to death the narrative from the police the following day was what? That she was a terrorist, a 14-year-old who was yeah. sleeping in her house. I can name story upon story upon story that we have done that tells you that, the, the, unfortunately, the cases that have gone as far as the Wilkimani case, as far as the case from, from, uh, from Wiki, are the exceptions. They are not the rule. And that's the problem, that we are not dealing with this, that there's a reluctance within the force itself to deal with this systemic issue. And it goes back so far that I think it's, it's, it's almost as if they're afraid that if they open that Pandora's box, they don't know what, what skeletons fight. are going to come tumbling out, yeah. right? Maybe that's the, th the thing, because we don't know what happened to Msando. We don't know we're still on, it's still in abeyance what happened to Robert Ouko. In, we could go as far back as before independence, and still there'll be cases where the police's involvement is questionable. So that's what we need to have a reckoning with now. Not to say that yes, there's one case and we should celebrate, fine. In that instance, that there's a family that possibly will get justice, that is good. But the police defend us, protect us every day, interact with us every day. How is it that we cannot have some sort of conversation about how to move this needle forward? And that's why, uh, again, uh, I'll bring in IPOA on a policy level, um, on a level of investigations. And in terms of leading this conversation, it shouldn't be me as a journalist. Yeah. I should be reporting, right? It should be IPOA, who have the statistics, who have the data, who have the background, who have the knowledge, who have the support of internal affairs, and as well as the police, to lead a conversation about extrajudicial executions, police brutality in this country, if we're going to change, yeah. and the culture of violence that unfortunately is being shaped very negatively by the police. Yeah. That's where we should be going. Dr. Goni, with all due respect, it appears IPOA is the weakest link in this. By 2017, some of the names that Namu is mentioning, I refer to him because he has a lot of experience and he reports on this. Yes. 
a child was killed in Kisumu during the election violence, baby Pendo. Nothing. We've had nothing to date. We are on this one now. Thank you, James. Uh, first of all, let me start with the <coughs> what you said about the Embu case uh, that uh, I poor I called to Embu by the uh, the IG. I poor went to Embu on its own motion and on its own mandate, and we were not invited or called by the Inspector General. The Inspector General called the Internal Affairs Unit. Now. I can't, can I quickly answer the Kisumu baby, Ken, baby Pendo? Yes. Baby Pendo case, I poor took it, I poor investigated it, and there was a pronouncement in court. We took the case to the Directorate of Prosecutions. The ODPP took that case to court, and the ODPP had said that since the commanders who were commanding the people in the field because the UDPP was convinced that there was cover-up. And the UDPP is now in court seeking to do what is called um, uh, serv serv service commanders, what is called the seniors to be charged for that case because they covered up the juniors who were in operation in the field where this incident occurred. So he's, he's looking, he's seeking now for command responsibility. That's what he calls it. So here's the thing, uh, and, and, and Amo has brought it up. The, the, the question of how this is a systemic problem, and we cannot run away. And, and looking at the individual cases, and everyone on Twitter is you know, telling us, and they told you on, on your thread on, we should not forget this, my brother was you know, my friend. And it went you know, up to the hundreds, because it's a systemic problem and we're refusing to, to respond to that. Baby Pendo, this is 2017 or 2021, yeah. right? The matter is still stuck between a decision, like now we're being updated, between the ODPP and the courts. This is where the problem is, isn't it? The, the, the problem is, in totality, it is a criminal justice system. But the first interaction between the public and the criminal justice system is often the police, right? The policeman is a person who will stop a person, ask to search them, or you know, arrest them. That interaction, that first interaction is a problem. Let's go back to the Willy Kimani case. Why is it that Willy Kimani became a target? He was defending somebody who stood up against the police officers who had tried to plant drugs on him after torturing him, right? He was standing up for that person. And unfortunately, this is all too familiar. Go to any um, informal settlement, go to any lower class neighborhood in Kenya, and I can guarantee you, you put your hand up like this and you'll be able to get more than enough stories of the interaction between the police and members of the public. Secondly, of course, it's, it's, in the, it's, in, it's within the judiciary, right? But you see, judiciary, unfortunately, can only act on the quality of the evidence that is presented by the police, right? In 2016, IPOA had a report saying that six out of the 10 cases presented to, um, to the DPP and going to court would fail on uh, failures regarding evidence, right? So there's a problem with the collection of evidence. Hopefully now with forensics being involved and more intelligent policing being involved, we can see that as a change. But then third, it's also the, 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 the criminal justice system in terms of what we do with people who are presumed to be innocent until proven guilty. Majority of the people who are in jail right now aren't in committee, they're in remand, they're in remands, yeah. right? And a person can stay in remand for two, three years because of a lack of, um, because of, a lack of, of bail, bail money, yeah. because of various reasons. And that also clogs up the, 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 the criminal justice system. So, I mean, it's a, it's a huge issue. But because we're talking about extrajudicial killings, police brutality, let us speak about that first link in the chain, which is the interaction between the police and members of the public. If that does not change, then I can guarantee you, James, even if we have good court systems, then that interaction is still going to be a negative one, and the legacy will continue. Well, son, I need to go a break, but in a minute or less. Yeah, the suggestion here is the interaction between the police and the public sometimes, and most of the time, especially in you know, poor neighborhoods, appear to be confrontational, right? What informs that? You've been you know, in the service for a long time. 
Could you just perhaps give us, if you like, just an in into what exactly makes a person in uniform, you know, to almost hate, say, a poor person, a poor young person? Because that appears to be what it is. From all the reports we have from IMLU, from the justice centers, from all this, it appears that there is a certain hate, right, on these young people who are in poor neighborhoods. What is that? Well, uh, this is a topic that can be explored for quite a while. Because, personally, I don't know how to discuss officers of National Police Service in absentia of Kenyan society. Police officers are recruited from the, Ke the, from the Kenyan society. The value system. Both share a, com a, value, a common value system. I really do not agree that there is any form of hatred between police officers and uh, members of public residing in... Uh, even, even with the numbers, even with the numbers, with all due respect. Like, it's, it's really there. It's the, the numbers we see, you know this. The numbers we see... The that numbers are, of police officers? No, no, the numbers we see that are coming out of what happens in poor neighborhoods. For instance, just this last year, when immediately curfew was announced, people were getting not only killed, but they were being brutalized. You know, police were literally beating up people for getting late. I must admit that it happened. But you, you will also agree with me that once it leashed our doorsteps, we worked on it squarely. Quite a number of officers are already before court. And, 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 and let it appear, let us try and uh, magnify our efforts also and our achievements. Like I said before, we are not happy at all when officers violate the law. I have said police officers are members of this great society called Kenya. When members of public are wounded, when they are hurt by their brothers, brothers who were recruited from them, this one is, 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 it isn't pleasing. But I also would want us to look at Kenyans generally and their ability to, and their ability to, to observe the law. Kenyans have a problem, smart, of observing the law. Let's see what hap let us look at what hap happens every day on our roads, every day in our marketplaces. Many, many a times police have become victims. We have lost police officers who are simply innocent, patrolling the streets, doing nothing. We have lost officers. We have not only lost officers in urban, in urban settlements, we have lost officers in uh, the Luros, in Capendo, in... Uh, in uh, um, Peketoni, officers who left their, their families to go and seek, and seek livelihoods. But they come back in, in, in coffins and, and thereafter what follows? Miserable families. There is a missing link. There is a missing link between police officers and members of public, which we all need to address. We need to address it as a nation. We need to address it as a nation. All right. Okay. Hang on. Again, you see, there's a difference between a police officer and a member of the public. There's a reason why people in the armed for in the army, in KWS, forces. are called the disciplined forces. Yes. Because they live by a specific code. They are standing orders that guide their every action. And while they are on duty, there is a specific standard and value system that they're supposed to aspire to. The police are supposed to be a representation of what enforcement should look like in a country. I agree to the extent that we have a wider societal problem with respect for law, right? Yes. And, but it doesn't come from the public. It comes from our leadership, right? right? Our lead, a fish rots from the head, yes. you know, to use the old <laughs> adage, right? A fish rots from the head. So you cannot gaslight the public and say it is your fault because you have bad values at home yes. that my police officers are beating people with nyaunyos the first second they get a chance. There's a problem with leadership in this country. That one we must accept and, and lay on the table. Mm -hmm. But that does not That's excuse. not an excuse. It's not, not an excuse to go out there and shoot somebody in the head during a protest, right? It's not because an excuse. Because they behave badly. Exactly. It's not an excuse. Why is it that the property of some, some rich magnate in town is more valuable than the life of a, of a protester who is going out there on the streets protesting for their lives? Why is it that in the, in the standing orders, uh, in, in uh, the Public Order Act, right, they, they act more in the defense of property than in the defense of life? 
we need to ask ourselves these questions. We're heading to a very, very high octane election. And you will see buildings in the CBD being protected as if they have heartbeats, right? But at the end of the day, what happens with members of the public? We must hold our, our police officers accountable. We must hold ourselves accountable individually. Yeah. I agree. But our police officers, the institutions that under, underpin our democracy, must be held uh, to account if we're going to be able to sustain ourselves as a society. That's just the plain truth of it. All right. right? Yeah. Okay. We must agree. Taking a short break. When we come back, we're going to open this discussion about the wider question of the problem and how do we start fixing it when we come back. If you're watching with all due respect. I'm looking at your tweets and your questions. We'll address them individually to the panelists. Don't go too far. Who wants to answer? Mary? Mary has a toothache. Oh, I see. And who knows why? Because her tooth is too big. No. It might be a hole in her tooth called a cavity. That's why I brush twice a day using Colgate. Imagine this is your tooth and these are food acids that cause cavities. Colgate with calcium and fluoride helps prevent cavities. Who protects our teeth? Colgate! For maximum cavity protection. Introducing Colgate's double action charcoal toothbrush with charcoal infused bristles. shillings on the easiest jackpot in Kenya for only 20 bob. Play the middle jackpot every week on betsafe.co.ke For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the 1, 2, 3 with Colgate every night. place in your heart. You're still husband and wife. And that means you still have a right to all of his assets, Catherine. So what look are you going for? The look that says, I'm back with a bag. What I want is to be drop dead gorgeous before I see my ex-husband. I want to look different. I want to look exciting. I want him to drool over me when he sees me again. A place Narisha na Optiven at the Garden of Joy by Optiven. Deposit 995,000 Kenya shillings and get a free washing machine for your home. Call us today. For years, others have told our stories and taken our narratives. That has led to misconceptions, half truths, and outright lies. That ends now. It starts with the truth, our truth. A collection of our ideas, thoughts, and aspirations. The ones that propel us, enable us, and ultimately empower us. Find it all at nation.africa. An informed, unbiased, and comprehensive coverage of news and events. With in-depth investigative pieces as well as opinions from the best within and outside the continent. Nation Audio will also provide the best in creative audio experiences. Find fresh, innovative segments to stimulate your mind on Nation Puzzles. Stay up to date with the Nation newsletter. It's simple, affordable, and accessible to you with just one click for 150 shillings monthly. Subscribe now on nation.africa forward slash subscribe and get the exclusive story. Nation. Empower Africa. That, that really captures, you know, the, the, the question of the relationship between the police and the public. And, and I just want to get to, you know, uh, Namu's bring the Stephanie Moraz case and, and the exact quote uh, from Justice Francis Andai. And I read, 
this information together with one with the senior police officers in whose jurisdiction the incident occurred failed to provide sufficient evidence to identify the police officer who was culpable of the shooting. So the police in this case have once again employed what has been described as the blue code of silence. I have a third question for you. Does the blue code of silence exist? I don't think so. I don't think so. I believe it is important for us to look at each case on its own merit and the players who were involved in the investigations or assembling of uh, evidence. If there is a general reluctance in one case, there may be a lot of enthusiasm in another case. So, 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 in my own view, the Brew Code doesn't really exist across the board. Maybe an allegement, maybe, maybe reluctance here and there of one or two officers, but and when it is discovered, you can imagine, you can imagine the force with which it is, it is uh, uh, confronted. We have our own code of regulations. And officers who do not observe the code uh, have, there, there is a process through which uh, 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 punishment should be awarded. Uh, 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 and therefore, uh, the issue of the Brew Code probably may be, a, may be an idea that exists somewhere. And now, it's Blue Code of Silence is an idea that exists somewhere. It is, re it is as real as this glass of water, James, at least from my point of view. Let me explain why. Every, or let me not say every, but a huge number of investigations in which the police are targeted never wind up with the police themselves um, you know, being responsible for it, either for a lack of evidence, tainted evidence, stolen evidence, you know, trying to, 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 um, to sabotage these cases from, you know, from start to finish. The Stephanie Mora case is a great example of, of the same. I've just been reminded of the name of the young lady who was killed in, 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 in the coast. It was Kwekwe Mwandaza. Right? Remember what the first narrative was once Kwekwe was killed. She was a terrorist. Yes. Remember what the first narrative was once Emmanuel and Benson were killed, that they jumped out of the vehicle, right? In fact, the family says that, that the, the police station at Manyata denied that they had even had someone like that in, in, the, in, 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 custody. in, in the custody. Yeah. If that is not the blue code, then I do not know what is, right? It does exist. It is something that every Kenyan knows to be self-evident when dealing with the police, that the police will always protect their own. In some instances, it is good for the police to protect one another. In instances where they're under threat, where they need to defend one another, because the police face serious threats when going out in the streets. But when it comes to the kind of justice that it needs to be, to be you know, meted out in this case, you must break ranks. You must break ranks because how do you live with yourself with the blood of someone who was innocent on the hands of the police and you knowing the answers will keep quiet about it right yeah one last example of the blue code i don't know if we remember the case of bernard kirenya bernard kirenya was an officer who was part of a squad that was formed to um, eliminate that's the word that we use eliminate yes um, dissidents people who are unwanted in in uh, in society he broke rank he became a witness. He was taken under witness protection. Within days of him recording his statement, he stepped out of his apartment and he was gunned down. Yeah. If that is not the blue code, tell me what it, what, what it is. What is? What is the blue code? For, if, if, if that's not it, with all due respect, Madam Sarah. But, but Alan Namu would also have told us who gunned down uh, Mr. Kirenya. But that's the point. The point exactly. is, the point that, is that, for that nobody to know. That's the, point, the point is for nobody to know. Yeah. Who knows who shot uh, Stephanie Mora? Except the fact that there was a government bullet inside her body. Who knows? That government bullet was fired from the chamber of a gun that is assigned to someone in a police station. We you don't just it. pick up a gun like, like a broom and walk out, right? That's the point. The point, the entire point of the blue code yeah. is that nobody knows. And it becomes this mystery that we have to try it's and deduce on and Twitter. Stories and you know, and it becomes a narrative that we have to deduce for ourselves as members of the public. We are not the ones with the investigative mandate or, or capacity. No. It is the police. So if the police are being told that a blue code exists by the very people upon which the power 
and the brutality of that blue code is being meted, it, they owe it to the public to investigate. Because within that society are the mothers, brothers, sisters, relatives, wives, children of those police who will one day be met by that same blue code. Remember also, there's a very serious problem with mental health in the police right now. A number of police officers are unfortunately turning on one another, right? Yeah. If we do not address the problems within the police force, this force will also eat itself, you know? So it's a serious problem. Let's not deny, let's not take a denialist point of view. Please, it is 2021. It, it's easy to admit that, mm. Dr. Godi, here's, here's the thing, the, since the creation of, you know, IPOI, it doesn't look, and, and we'll say, you know, it doesn't look like things have improved. You, the commission, I know, you know, this is your, your new, but things have not improved significantly. What is IPOI actually doing? To, to solve the problems, the immediate problems that we have, the systemic problems that we have. Okay. IPOA is <coughs> civilian oversight, and IPOA deals with civilian issues that are brought to it by either reports, letters, telephone calls, or where we feel that the civilian has been uh, compromised by the police, we can move there on our own motion and do that. Now, when it comes to um, change, what you are calling change, what has IPOA done? Now, IPOA as an organization, we actually do what is called research. We do monitoring. We do um, inspections. Once we do that, we have recommendations and we give those recommendations to the implementer. Now, the implementer of our recommendations as far as the police service is concerned is the National Police Service under the command of the IG and the National Police Service Commission. Those are the organizations that implement the recommendations that come from IPOA. But we do make and we have made even issues to do what, what we have talked about. Alan Namu has talked about the psychological aspect of the police. We have that report and we have given it so that they can look at it and we have made recommendations as to what needs to be done. What, what is your recommendation on, on the question of how police interact with the public? The question of how police interact with the public, we've asked ourselves that question. And we are of the opinion that this thing should begin from the grassroots. When I say the grassroots, we need to recruit people who have got police work at heart. You know, every profession has got a passion. If you are recruited to police training college, Kiganjo, simply because it is an easier job to get after school, and you don't have that passion to be a police officer, then there is still something wrong because you are in it, but your heart is not in it. Secondly, we are saying the training curriculum needs to focus more on civil and psychological aspects of policing than physical. I want to wind out and, and want to get your final points from here. In if you just look at your work and, and grade one to ten, what do you say IPOA is? If you were to grade your work, IPOA is more or less uh, in one word. IPOA is the ombudsman for the public over the police. <laughs> I would say that. Yes. Okay, uh, Madam Sarah. The, yes, yes. The, there's a lot of things you you you've, you've said tonight that that. Uh, some would sit well with, with, with people in the force, with your colleagues in the force. Others would give the public consternation, right? Because it appears that what you've said is defense of things that we know that are outright and we can see it. So for those who are watching tonight, what would you say is the commitment of the National Police Service, not only to this case, but to start solving these systemic problems that we have? National Police Service has committed itself to fulfill its mandate and uh, to really do things in a full reflection 
of its vision and mission. I believe there are many steps that have been taken. We've just mentioned trauma. And uh, that has been an issue that in, in, from many angles has contributed to uh, you know, you know, officers not giving their best. But uh, I'm happy that uh, uh, the Directorate of Counseling, uh, Chaplains and Counseling, uh, is now up and learning. And uh, has offices in all the counties. And the officers now have uh, a platform whereby they can be debriefed. Even after participating in uh, very traumatic uh, uh, operations. And that one is a plus on the part of the National Police Service. Be and I will believe when all the officers now, officers ought to know that this officer, these offices have been opened for, you know, for their good. And uh, many of them have uh, surrendered themselves to give their story, to be debriefed. And even recommendations have been made, even for, re for rehabilitation, so that so, we can so, have sober officers yeah. working. So, so I can say that uh, so many steps have been put in place to ensure that our officers are fit and competent to continue serving the public in this nation. But we are not yet there. We are not yet there, but we are miles into it. All right. Yes. Can we call you in 30 days? You give a commitment, the commitment that this case in Embu would be completed, fully investigated. Can you give that commitment? I, I wouldn't do. I, but I said, probably said, feel you need to push that one on the door of IPOA. They are the people investigating. Our, us, on our part, is to collaborate with them to ensure that every evidence is collected okay. Okay. and okay. that they have... Do we have a commitment for 30 days? We would have conclusion of the report of the Embu brothers? If, uh, if all uh, goes well, that we should be able to complete that in 30 days. What is if all goes well? You see, I'm talking about that as uh, Madam Commissioner of Police has said. You know, we need to get the evidence preserved, you see. So if, if we don't get, we could, it could if, be longer? Yes, because we have to now to look for it. Okay. Yes. Now, what, what should we not forget as you take us home? Okay. The so many things that we shouldn't but let me let me start with um, just a bit of pushback uh, and a correction I, I from my point of view the job is of, of ipoa is not as an arbitra as an ombudsman it's it's more oversight yes. right so that they should oversight the police on behalf of the public and they are a civilian authority so acting as an ombudsman for me is 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 it's beneath, it's, it's it's beneath okay. the standard that that mm -hmm. the, uh, that IPOA should should hold itself to. Okay, so number one, we should not, like I said on Twitter, we should not forget the names of these of these um, young men. We should not forget the names of many other people who have have been killed in cases um, of interaction with the police, either through police brutality or various other actions. We should not forget that nearly seventy percent of the people who are killed are young men. Men, meaning that a generation of young men is being wiped out. And that's a serious concern that should shake the corridors of, the, the highest corridors of power. We should not forget that in 2017, Parliament passed the Coroner's Bill, bringing the Coroner's Act, meaning that there should be a Coroner General who should be investigating this Embu case now. Yes. presenting forensic evidence to IPOA to help them lead their policy. We should not forget that uh, the directorate in, uh, in, in, the, in the police service should be doing intelligence-led and community-led policing. Finally, James, we should not forget, because I haven't heard an admission here, we should not forget that the problem of policing in this country is systemic. It is not a case of a few bad apples. If it were a case of a few bad apples, there would be no Kwekwe Mwandaza, there would be no Stephanie Mora, there would be no Emmanuel, no Benson, there would be no James Morethi who was shot and killed on Madaraka Day, no less, on, uh, last year, right? A homeless man with nothing, with nothing in his pockets. There should be no names like that. 
we should not forget that this should be an election issue that all leaders across the board should be addressing themselves to. Yeah. We should not forget, finally, James, I have many finalists today, that <laughs> if, if this is as big a problem as I'm characterizing it, yeah. there should be a commission of inquiry led by IPOA, led by the evidence that is being brought to bear and the analysis by IPOA, yeah. so that we know what the problems with our policing are and we can change, finally, and really the get problems. the police service that we deserve. Yes. We shouldn't forget any of that. We should forget that. John Alanamu, African Censored. So thank you very much for making time. Sante. National Police Service Commissioner Sarah Duncan, yes. thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for thank making you. some admissions and some half admissions. Yes. Dr. Uh, Walter Ugodi from IPOA. I thank you all for your time. Thank we'll you continue much. having this conversation. It's yes. not the end. Thank you, James. Right. Thank you so much. Right. You're watching right. with all due respect. Thank you very much for your coming. Thank you very much for all your comments. I couldn't get to all two of them, but we will. We will certainly get to all of them. And we commit to continue having these conversations and these discussions as open as we can. My name is James Smart. We'll do this all over again next week, same time, same station. Stay with us. This is NTV.